Welcome to this week's Movie Math, where soaring high at the box office turned out to be more difficult than expected for several movies. So once again, Mark Watney prevailed, holding on to the number one spot with just a 30% drop. Mighty impressive. He's still floating a bit behind Dr. Ryan Stone, though, who dropped just about 20% in her second weekend with the 122 million two-week total. In comparison, The Martian is at 108. It has about 100 million overseas, though, making for a worldwide total to date of 226 million. So indeed, it's all systems go for the Ridley Scott space flick. As for awards season, like Gravity, The Martian is also coming up on some stiff art house competition. Just wait until you see what's going on in the specialty market. If only the top 10 could boast such headlines. Instead, there's some real doom and gloom going on, as Warner Brothers' Pan had the weekend all to itself, but could do nothing with it. The only new wide release did even worse than the most sobering projections, opening with just 15.5 million at number three. While that's laughable in comparison to the debuts of Disney's live-action fairy tales, it's sadly right in line with Hugh Jackman's other non-X-Men flicks like Chappie, Prisoners, Australia, and even the pre-The Dark Knight prestige. In fact, Jackman's hardly improved since Swordfish back in 2001, his first leading role post his breakout turn in X-Men. So, Hugh Jackman says he's now finally ready to be James Bond, an offer he turned down a few years ago? With box office numbers like these, he should be fighting to remain Wolverine. Although, we'll see how X-Men Apocalypse fares without him. With one more outing as Wolverine and the Olympic bio Eddie the Eagle with Taron Edgerton planned, his real future might lie in musicals a la Les Mis, as he'll also appear in Broadway 4D, while the circus musical The Greatest Showman on Earth is set for 2017. Yes, it appears after years of snickting for his dinner, Jackman will now have to sing for it. It's also worth noting that Pan fared even worse than last year's whitewashed Exodus, becoming the latest film to implode from whitewashing. The real test, though, will be Ghost in the Shell with Scarlett Johansson, as maybe Hollywood is simply not whitewashing with big enough stars. I mean, will you be able to resist this Gaijin Motoko? So while nobody believed that Levi Miller could fly, they couldn't even believe that Joseph Gordon-Levitt could walk on a tightrope. Or, even more troubling, perhaps audiences might have simply not cared. Yes, going wide after a limited IMAX-only debut last weekend, where The Walk wasn't even able to make it into the top 10, this weekend, in wide release, it only managed to climb to 7th place. Now, while we all knew that Joseph Gordon-Levitt wasn't much of a box office draw, this has got to be embarrassing for Robert Zemeckis, who was once a box office brand. Luckily for Sony, their scales were balanced by Hotel Transylvania's boffo third-week performance, where it remained in second place for the second weekend in a row. Falling once again in the mere 30th percentile range, the sequel is so far about 15 million ahead of the original Hotel Transylvania. Worldwide, though, it still has a ways to go, with a number of high roller guests yet to check in, including most of Europe, Australia, Russia, and of course, China, which won't get a room until December. Elsewhere in the box office, The Intern boasted the strongest hold in its third weekend, falling just about 25%, and fascinatingly, is doing quite well in South Korea. Although, when you consider Asia's long tradition of respect for their elders and their aging population, it actually makes a lot of sense. No China release date is set, but the intern did just open in Japan. The Scorch Trials also dropped just 30% in its fourth weekend, yet while it was clearly not a box office sprinter like its predecessor right out of the gate, it doesn't seem to be much of a long distance runner either. Then there's Sicario, which dropped 40% in just its second weekend of wide release, hardly the head turner it was in limited release. Mediocre word of mouth or Emily Blunt strikes out again? It's hard to tell but this will surely take some of the wind out of Sicario's awards campaign. But Steve Jobs is a serious contender, actually opening in just four theaters, with the per theater average awards contenders are supposed to boast. In fact, the Aaron Sorkin Danny Boyle bio has the 15th highest opening weekend per theater average of all time, joining prestige picks like the Grand Budapest Hotel, American Hustle, The Imitation Game, and even American Sniper. 
In stark contrast to Sicario, Steve Jobs' awards chances just got a whole lot brighter. As for this coming weekend, Sony hopes to dominate the Halloween movie market with a one-two punch. While Universal's own Halloween contender will have trouble taking on Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks, much less Jack Black. And that's the Weekend Box Office. I'm Grace Randolph and we just did some movie math. As always, thanks for watching. And I hope you'll go beyond the trailer for these other top movies.